Uh, we had uh, a session with uh, Amsterdam and Zurich uh, about uh, city visions and how to implement those in uh, decision making. And we had some, um, well, it's a, a, a broad statement. Uh, I would say that um, unlike the, the other financial crisis that led to all kinds of new system thinking about the economy, this new corona crisis gives rise to all, so, all sorts of questions that have to do with the public, the public part of the city. So we had a lot of talk about um, public space, about public transport, public health, uh, and public uh, participation. Um, so that's, I think, uh, something really new. Um, and so some of the questions, for example, that are raised are, uh, what is the role of the planner? Uh, as a referee or some other function in this participatory process, uh, uh, trying to reconcile the, uh, the big scale planning with the bottom up initiatives. So how do we define this role? Another question that was raised was uh, about um, housing density and growth within a city, uh, not wanting to expand too much uh, in its boundaries. Uh, combined with the, the issues of the crisis. So how can you be more flexible uh, and therefore safe uh, for people's health? Um, another, um, well, I, I didn't have time to ask the less uh, for the, what the cities learned actually from each other because we already went back to this session. But uh, what I think uh, that could be learned, uh, for example, uh, from um, Zurich is that it's important to also look at your own democratic traditions and uh, build on those. Uh, uh, Switzerland has uh, its own direct democracy, for example. Amsterdam has other assets. Uh, another lesson from Zurich would be to safeguard also space for industries and the circular economy and not only think about housing. Um, not that one would only think about housing, but it's very important to to have some space for industries left. A uh, lesson from Amsterdam uh, to collaborate with other municipalities beyond the borders to invest in metropolitan landscape and quality of life and to experiment with new types of participation. So um, I, think, I think that's about um, what I can wrap up very quickly. Later in the report there's more. Definitely. Uh, we uh, learn more about Amsterdam and Zurich further. Uh, I would invite David now for the next uh, city, uh, The Hague and Leon. Yes, uh, so indeed we had a short uh, presentation from both uh, cities uh, and I'm going to really shortly wrap uh, uh, up on, on two parts actually. Uh, the vision part and the method part where we were mostly discussing. And what we noticed is for the Netherlands is that the Novi does give a lot of assignments and uh, integral, integral uh, thinking or working on it, but it doesn't give us inspiration how to move forward and what should be the, uh, what should, could the city do, uh, especially Den Haag uh, uh, noticed that uh, uh, a lot. And what we learned from uh, uh, Leon, this is that there is a complexity of assignments, but uh, maybe we shouldn't make one more plan or we shouldn't make just one plan as, as uh, Eric showed uh, the, the examples of Amsterdam where there's like one plan that try to bring everything together. Maybe it's no longer possible to just make one plan. And uh, what I also like from uh, Lyon is that we, maybe we should learn to plan more as we are a poor city and uh, really uh, in, uh, pick out what we really need as a, what really needs to be done instead of uh, trying to fix everything but really try to focus it could help us uh, as a focus that's for part on the uh, vision part then and the methods what we uh, learned is that uh, the methods as well works uh, for decision makers and uh, eldermen to help them think about, uh, to think more creative to, 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 than we are thinking specifically on the method used in uh, Lyon. Um, and help them to make decisions, but also show how the complexity of, uh, 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 of assignments are and how to indeed put them together and where could be uh, uh, no regrets uh, uh, at least done. If you would work more with uh, uh, citizens, I think uh, what we learned there is that we need, you need to build up complexity. Um, and you have to start quite easy. Uh, what I now learn in Lyon is that uh, um, 
They have to start small. They have to start may also not a serious game, but maybe also a fun game. Uh, and then try to build up uh, further what they, what them that we learned from uh, Den Haag is, for example, start make a design for your own neighborhood. Do that for several parts uh, in uh, Den Haag and then bring all these groups together and then let them discuss what that would mean on the city level. So really building up uh, complexity. That was it. Thank you so much, David. Uh, I invite next uh, Aryan to talk about uh, Rotterdam, Utrecht and uh, Oslo. Uh, yes. Um, well, thank you all for participating. It was a really nice talk, I thought. Um, we started talking about uh, regional uh, collaborations and the different models we have um, to do this um, and came out that in Oslo there actually is quite a strong tradition in uh, collaborating regionally uh, on the basis on, for transport uh, and this transport agency actually formed a really good, good basis for uh, a urban urban uh, regional development plan when this was needed um, and actually all the the municipalities there they are really on the same page uh, because of this long uh, uh, tradition of collaboration um, while in the Netherlands uh, or in Rotterdam for example uh, in the region there is the Verstelkings uh, Alliance which is more like a coalition of the of the willing, some municipalities who who came together by themselves and made an offer uh, to the national government. Uh, while in Utrecht, it's more of a negotiation between a lot of uh, adjacent municipalities, um, while they are struggling a bit with uh, all the interests of the municipalities themselves. Um, and then at some point, um, someone noticed that we are really uh, talking still about this institutional world and uh, that the paradigm shift actually should come uh, from uh, involving more with uh, with people, with citizens and also with politicians. Um, and Peter Austin from Oslo also gave some uh, good examples about that, um, how they uh, really uh, involve politicians of all these municipalities in the region. Um, they talk to them really regularly and make them really own this 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 vision and uh, and involve them in the in the process, um, and they are actually also do this with the different uh, landowners in this region. So uh, one statement was uh, involve more people with less information, uh, because we as planners have uh, a lot of words and uh, we know what we talk about, but it's really difficult to get it uh, to the people and the, and the politicians. And that's a, a task ahead. Thank you, Aryan. That's a really interesting statement that involves more people with less information. Maybe that's a big debatable topic itself. Let's see how we elaborate that in our report. Uh, lastly, I would like to uh, in uh, invite Anna Luisa for uh, Helsinki and Eindhoven. Sure. Uh, actually, I, I took literally your, your requests of just saying two sentences. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we try to just uh, uh, make a sort of summary uh, related to what each city thought of one another and of the dialogue today. So we thought it's, it's nice maybe to wrap it up like that. And uh, we can basically uh, point it out three main lines of, of, uh, of lessons that they pick up from one another or they would like to keep on informing one another. Uh, one of them has to do uh, with uh, how open planning is for the public or not. How, how, how much can you bring the planning into the public sphere of discussion? That was uh, brought up by, by Helsinki, so I don't know, we should open them up much more, learn from, from Netherlands on that. Um, another thing is like, it's very important to open up this dialogue among cities on a very broad scale, so not only with our closest neighbors, then, then we can also learn the best about different practices, because during the session, indeed, uh, Eindhoven and Helsinki figured out why they were put in the same session, like, oh yes, we share the same issues. Mm -hmm. But indeed, with a slightly different approach that could be very informative to one another. And another uh, issue was, for example, the way of interacting with, um, with the citizens, yeah. or to, to how, how to share information or, or get information also. For example, in Helsinki, I focus very much on this very open source uh, 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 pro providing of, of data 
while uh, Eindhoven focuses much more on directly approaching citizens and interacting with them. And they can, both cities can learn from this kind of uh, different approach. And, um, and lastly, also, and, and also important was like, uh, Eindhoven was very interested, like, hey, we have to figure this out more in detail with you guys. So I think it makes sense to couple people more in relation to very specific challenges to figure out technicalities, like, hey, how can we actually figure this out further? And so, yeah, that, those were the main conclusions of our talk today. No, and it was a great talk, actually. So thank you all again for making part of it. Thank you, Anna Luisa. And I totally agree with you that at the end, uh, Eindhoven asked that we should be in contact and we should try and learn more in specific subjects that how we deal with it uh, here. And more or less what I can understand or I can conclude is that, of course, we divided the cities, grouped them in terms of their challenges, in terms of their process, how they're working on the visions. But at the same time, the challenges, the environmental challenges or the societal challenges that we have in the planning system are more or less the same. So anyhow, from all the reports, I'm hoping that uh, the other session cities will be also able to understand each other. So it's not that uh, the report should be very specific to two cities or three cities. Rather, all the cities should have some gain some kind of knowledge from this report. Uh, I pass on the mic to uh, Paul then, uh, Paul Gerritsen, the director of Delta Metropole. I want to know what did he learn today from this meeting? Um, well, yeah, uh, thank you, Alan Krita, for, uh, for giving me the honor to wrap up just a little bit because I think we're maybe ready for drinks, um, yeah. even though we're not together, but uh, we will experiment with that uh, later on, see if that works out. Um, but um, in, in my perspective, um, we, um, we had a lot to talk about. And, um, and of course, that's always the, the case in this kind of setting. It's uh, you first need to learn to understand each other. So actually, we need a lot of time of interacting. And I think it's great that, that this kind of um, uh, talk can be the starting point of that. And what I learned is, uh, is picking up from uh, the meeting we had in December, um, uh, the dialogue number three, where actually it was pointed that it would be so important to, uh, to uh, not um, educate the planners, uh, the urban planners and the vision uh, makers uh, better in, in coping with, uh, with all kinds of uh, people needing to be included in the vision making, but rather vice versa, to uh, think about how to hand over your planning capacities to wider groups that are uh, stakeholders in this kind of process. So how do you um, uh, um, put this kind of uh, uh, capacities of looking uh, into the future a little bit and think about what that means for your decisions right now. And I think this point came back quite um, uh, explicitly in, in a couple of sessions. Uh, I think the emphasis on the, the role that the citizen played is, um, is very apparent um, and also has been uh, even more apparent just recently because of this uh, corona crisis. I don't know how it is with you, but I look out onto the city from uh, from the room where I am now, and I just see how people sort of rediscover the, uh, their direct uh, surroundings, and uh, and that kind of realization of uh, actually what it means to be a city as a citizen um, is, I think, very fundamental. And that point of thinking about creating a vision based on and through. Um, the citizens is, of course, the big uh, challenge. Uh, that requires experiments, and that is also the big challenge. So the vision making, the, the, uh, the, the making of plans is by nature very structured, and uh, it needs to be confronted with the a little bit much more muddy world of, the, uh, of all kinds of involvements of, of, of people. Of course, there is uh, there's a lot of experiments, particularly on the local scale, and the question is also how do you connect that to a larger strategic scale at which we are, uh, which we need to be able to um, to come forward with with answers to the big challenges that we are facing, because that of course is still mostly very fundamental. How to create a new balance that also has a relevant impact. Um, and, uh, and that uh, challenge, I think it was, uh, was mentioned also in, in the session with, uh, with um, 
uh, with Amsterdam is, is, uh, is quite difficult to, uh, to achieve. Um, I just want to, uh, to, um, to, hand, um, uh, to ask one question to one person um, uh, also in the audience. I saw Klaas Kuitenbrouwer, who is uh, actually uh, normally our colleague at the New Institute because he is, uh, he's, we are, we are, we're based in the New Institute, so we're colleagues in that sense. But we were also colleagues in starting a, a very interesting program uh, directed um, uh, at, uh, at uh, cities and, and municipalities in the in the Netherlands as a um, as a as an activity program uh, sidelined to the uh, to the contribution of the Venice Biennial and uh, that would start would have started on the 26th of uh, of March with a big meeting that was um, not possible, but um, there was a smaller version made uh, online, and uh, and and that program is called fin uh, Values for Survival, and it's it's re trying to relate to the basic values that you start your vision making from, uh, and it took its uh, hint from uh, the two. Uh, subjects that were uh, positioned at the Venice uh, Biennial. So I'm also curious how that will go, actually, because it has been postponed, as you might uh, know. Uh, the two uh, subjects were the multi multiplicity of other and the multi-species uh, urbanism. So really thinking about uh, urban planning in, the, in a completely different manner. Um, so, uh, Klaas, you are uh, now attached to that program. I'm, I'm just a little bit curious. There's a lot of talk about how uh, and uh, uh, and I think Joost um, uh, van Eersel also mentioned to that uh, about how this corona crisis has sort of sparked uh, the idea that some other things are possible as well. So did you in your program manage to make that, um, to make that shift from, um, from uh, having actually the uh, downside of not being able to, uh, to create a public, a public program of interaction, but, uh, but rather maybe um, has it sparked some sort of new thinking? Just to give you... Yeah. Um, or. Uh, that's a, yeah, extreme, a, a very important question. Um, um, funny enough, like from my perspective, I have the feeling that the lift of the lockdown happens in a way slightly too soon to be sure to say this. In the sense that you see a lot of uh, thorough thinking going into, but wait a minute, now we have to really kind of let this land in a very long-term alternative way of being. And just before those conclusions are being drawn, we're now lifting off. So we still have the chance to go back to normal. Mm -hmm. And there is no, no, I mean, it's being said a lot. The new normal is not the same as the old normal, but we, let's say we haven't made the shift fully enough to be able to be sure that we uh, uh, enter in a different mode of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, planning and relating to our surroundings. So I think what is left, I think you pointed it out clearly, is the fact that, uh, let's say, individual citizens and groups, communities relate to their surroundings now differently. But the question is very much how this uh, um, uh, uh, lands again and grounds in other, in other planning, uh, planning processes. So I had yeah, two, uh, um, like one observation in a way that uh, struck me as a big difference between our conversation the conversation here and the one we had previously is that uh, the previous one was very much informed by the gnosis of, um, uh, of of the climate crisis as the thing the big external added complexity added need for speed in a way uh, that i um uh, i didn't hear mention at all of course i missed most of conversations today i only sk i skimmed through a lot but i've only been there very briefly but i missed that issue here uh, or missed the, the mentioning of that issue here uh, so i thought uh, so this this seemed to be dealing more with the intrinsic que qu uh, questions of planning rather than that external pressure so i think uh, and specifically in that context your point of that you already mentioned that that um, the need for developing shared values among all the different scale stakeholders at different scales in planning processes seem to be of key value. There will be need to improvise, like control. Mostly, we can forget about it. We can plan ahead, but we we don't know what's what's coming ahead of. I mean, we know it will be difficult. We know it will be extremely complex. So what we need is a kind of an orientation to what binds us in the present rather than what will is our f uh, vision for the future. And that what binds us in the present can only be that thing which yeah, we can label a value. And I think this is also the, exactly the question that you address, like how um, 
planners relate to citizens, relate to all kinds of initiatives that together make cities. Yeah, it's, uh, as everybody knows, not only the planner that makes the city, although they have a key, a central role, but how these relations can work, like what is the mechanism of that correlation between all those mechanisms on a different scale. Yeah, we arrived at that question of, of, of shared value as, a, as a, and I think a conversation like this helps extremely good uh, to get, get a picture of that.